Friends, what y'all doing? Good. Because while I was minding my business being nosy friends, I done found out something for us to talk about. Let's do it. The origins of life. The origins of life. Not the oranges, but the oranges. <laughs> the origins of life. Where does life come from? Where do we start? Where do we do? How do we get here? Bitty bitty bum bum. Like, how did humans get on earth? This is a question I had for a long time, friends. And child, I just feel like I done went down this rabbit hole and I done learned so much stuff and I don't even know where to start. But we're going to start with creation. Okay, so you know you got science, which is evolution, and then you have creation or creationism. And one would think that we could all come together and just have a general understanding of how we got here, but we can't because everybody want their thing to be correct. Everybody want their religion to be correct. Most all religions say the same thing. They all talk about a great flood. They all talk about something or someone or some higher being putting us here and basically want us to be as humans good people. And I don't understand what's so hard about being a good person. Just be good. Some people say you got to believe in this. Some people say you got to believe in that. You got to do this. You got to do that. You gotta, all these requirements. But the overall goal is really the same. Like the message is the same across the board. So we'll talk about the Bible. We're going to talk about Sumer, which are the ancient Sumerian people. Mesopotamia, which is the oldest civilization known to man. Known to man. I want y'all to hear that. The oldest one known to man. That's the oldest one we can find. And then we're going to talk about evolution, okay? Because everything pretty much points to the same thing, which is one common creator. I don't, I don't, I just, I don't, I don't understand what the hoopla is about. Everybody up in a tizzy and they don't even understand they're reading the same thing. So first things first is the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki are a group of sky beings that came from this planet called Nibiru, 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 planet X, whatever you want to call it. And apparently it orbits every 3,500 years. Something like that. Um, whenever it comes into town, pretty much, it comes in Earth, causes a bunch of chaos, and the gravitational pull causes floods. Boom. Y'all heard that, right? Floods. The Great Flood. Think about it. Hold, please. We're going to stop right there because we're going to circle back around, friends. But it causes a bunch of chaos. Um, apparently, these Anunnaki were the seeders of life. They came in. They mixed their DNA in. They created humans to mine gold. And they needed gold to repair they're player. Calm down. Calm down, mother. Calm down. They needed to go to repair their atmosphere. Um, one thing that I found to be interesting is that science tells us that you can actually repair ozone with gold. Now, how these people knew that back in Sumer 8,000 years ago is beyond me. Unless somebody told them and it was really true. But hold, please. We're going to stop there. So all of that happened and humans were started and then there was a place called Eden that they can go to and um, Cain and Abel is in that story and they have a similar story to what's in the Bible. Even though this text came before the actual Bible was published. Now, a lot of people would say and that means that the Bible is not real. But for me, that just further solidifies the Bible. That just means that word of mouth is real. People can tell the same story over and over again. I can tell y'all a story today. By the time you get back to me, it's going to be different. Y'all following me? Okay, so I just feel like that just further solidifies. It just lets me know that this story about creation has been around for a very long time because it's saying the same thing. The Anunnaki story also talks about a great flood. Okay, there are some characters from Anunnaki from the Sumer text, the tablets, that are different names and some of them are the same names as the text from the Holy Bible. All right. But when you look across the board at all religions, they all tell the same story of creation. They talk about a great flood. And really, friends, to be honest with y'all, because I know I'm going to keep it a band with you. Sumer is just the earliest civilization that we know about. Can you imagine how many civilizations that existed, advanced civilizations that existed before Sumer that were possibly destroyed in the flood? They were possibly destroyed or just don't have no evidence left of it because it's been so long. Weather, erosion, all kinds of stuff. That's the earliest we know about. There are so many underwater civilizations that could be older than Sumer. But that's just the oldest that we know. They could have got that story from another civilization. So this is just how time goes. Now, overall, I think what the real thing is that we know that there's proof of a flood. We know that there's proof that this civilization existed. We don't know that there's proof of the Anunnaki. We just know that each religion has an excuse or some type of story about how humans got here. All right. So I'm thinking that 
We don't need to focus so much on who the creator was, but how the stories say the same thing. So let's just say this. In the Anunnaki story written by the Sumer people, there was a great flood that took place. And the flood happened because of the gravitational pull of the planet Nibiru. Now, science tells us that there actually should be a ninth planet in our solar system after Pluto. Now, I don't know if you want to count Pluto as a planet or not, but when I was in school, Pluto was a planet. Say what you want, argue with your mama, not me. I'm just here to deliver the story. So according to science, there should actually be a ninth planet in the solar system that orbits so far out that we can't see it. The only way we can tell that it's there is because there's a gravitational pull around um, items in the asteroid belt, right? So... That's a that's a that's a possible thing, right? It's just so dark, so far out. And this this Nibiru planet, according to the Anunnaki, I mean according to Sumer, um, it orbits every thirty five hundred years. It doesn't mean it orbits around Earth, but at the time they were thinking that Earth was the center of the galaxy, right? The center of the universe. But it orbits near Earth every thirty five hundred years. It doesn't mean that it went around the moon, it could have a completely different orbital type thing going on. And the reason for the flood, of course, was because the God Inky saw that people were evil and he wanted to destroy how the Anunnaki had been breeding with the humans. Now, keep that in mind, breeding in with the humans. So he decided to destroy the planet or destroy the earth with a flood. He knew that was going to come and he didn't want to warn the people. But in Leo, his brother came along and said, you know what, we're going to. We're going to spare this one guy. And that was Unapishtim. Now, that's in the story of Gilgamesh, right? But Unapishtim ended up getting immor- immortality. But when you go over to the Bible, you see that it's Noah. And God was going to destroy the earth because the angels had came down and began to sleep with the humans. And you had the Nephilim. You had these giants, right? And it says that there was giants in those days and after. Because really, after the flood people, there was giants. The Canaanites, there were giants, the land of milk and honey. There was giants in the valley. There was giants, David and Goliath. There were still giants, right? But he wanted to destroy the Nephilim, but he decided to spare one person, which was Noah. But Noah had wives, not Noah, but his children had wives. (laughs) Calm down, Mo. You're just doing too much. I'm just doing too much. Get myself up in a tizzy. So you have that creation story, right? And then you see this flood story repeat over 200 different times in different religions, all right? In the Grand Canyon, you see Buddha in the Grand Canyon, thousands of years old. How you get there? How did that get there? You see Egyptian gods in the Grand Canyon, thousands of years old. So what I feel like is with science, archaeologists, geology and all this stuff like that. History is constantly unfolding in front of us, friends. But it's just that when they have these big, huge discoveries where they find that something that they wrote in the textbooks was way off. They had to go back. They had to renege, go back and redo it again. Oh, baby, they're not going to come out and tell y'all about that. They're going to just say, "Mm, it's a rumor. It's not true. And then slowly they're going to ease it on in like they done told us how aliens might be a real thing now. But we've been saying this for years. So whatever they tell y'all, believe the opposite. Now, let's keep going in this creation story. So you see it all across. That's the origins, right? But then when you start looking at the scientific part of things, Humans evolved. We were Homo erectus. According to the Anunnaki, they seeded the Homo erectus and created the human. That's the missing link in the DNA. Scientists have yet to find the missing link. We just so closely related. Right. And I believe it's what the chimpanzee or the ape that humans are more closely related to. It's not even the monkey. What people think is a monkey. No, they walk upright. They were Homo erectus. Science tells us. That about 200,000 years ago, you had the Homo sapiens emerge. But you also had Homo neanderthalensis, which is the Neanderthals. You had Homo something. It's like, um, not Devonian. That's a Devonian period. I can't even think of the name right now. I put it up on the screen. But you also had those type of human beings as well, right? All around the same time, 200,000 to 400,000 years ago. They evolved from... Different versions of homo erectus beings. But where was the missing link? So if you look at it from a biblical standpoint, friends, or you look at it from a Sumer, the oldest civilization that we know to have had written texts, you see that somewhere in the mix, there had to be a being that created humans. And that's the bottom line. So everybody today on this planet is some kin to the same grandmama. Everybody got the same grandmama that lived in Africa 200,000 years ago, 180 to 200,000 years ago. Same one woman 
Now, that woman is known as mitochondrial Eve. That does not mean that she was the first woman. Okay, that just means that her DNA survived, her bloodline survived. So think of it this way. You know, I had a baby and then my baby had three or four or five babies and then their babies had three. And every time somebody was born, they had a daughter that continued on my bloodline. Right. Whereas. Adam chromosome Y Adam is different because I can have. A lineage of children as long as you know I continue to have children and my bloodline continues to go on that's fine but I can have four or five different baby daddies right one baby daddy can be from the east coast one could be from the west one could be from the south one could be they can all be from they can be Asian Caucasian persuasion whatever they want to be right but it's still gonna be the same my same bloodline so that's why it's different with Adam but when you look at everybody being related to one woman which is mitochondrial Eve which is similar to what the Bible is trying to tell us about how we all come from these two beings, Adam and Eve, right? Same thing that the Sumer text is trying to tell us we come from two beings in which there was Adamus and Heva, right? So not only that, but you have different mutations that happen within DNA, friends. Hence, you get this very rare blood type called Rh negative. Now I'm about I'm about to take y'all. I hope y'all holding on to y'all horses. I'm getting ready to take y'all on a ride. Now Rh negative blood type is said to have been a part of the fallen angel bloodline or the Anunnaki bloodline. So these people are said to have angel blood. Now friends, what's strange about this Rh negative is the way it's set up is that it cannot be replicated too many times, right? Without science, without technology medical technology that we have today it can't be replicated so with women who are rh negative that just means that where if you're a positive b positive a b positive o positive that means that you have a b or o i mean a b or a antigens right on your blood cell that also means that you are positive for the rh factor which comes from a rhesus monkey that they study meaning these rhesus monkeys have rh uh, antigens in their blood cells now, when you are Rh negative, that means that you do not have the D antigen that falls within the Rh factor, right? Those people are A negative, AB negative, B negative, O negative, right? So that is a rare blood type. So if a woman who is Rh negative becomes pregnant with a baby who is Rh positive, her body, gonna, her body is going to attack, okay? And it's going to be difficult for that woman to give birth to the baby. Without, um, I think it's called like a, um, a globular shot that they have to get. I'm saying it wrong. I know I'm saying it wrong. Y'all know I'm country. Just bear with me. To prevent them from miscarrying. Now, what I will say is that the immune response typically does not happen until after she has her first pregnancy. But a lot of women say that they had this issue during the first pregnancy. And it's because they were Rh negative. Now, what's strange about this is that that woman can successfully give birth to one child. Right. But after that, she's not going to be able to do it anymore, which makes me think about that fallen angel bloodline not wanting to become completely integrated into society. You get what I'm saying? Like it's like a fail safe. We're only going to do this one time and then that's it. And so therefore, it'll eventually begin to. die out, Right. Um, but we have something in place now that stops that from happening. So now we can have women can take a shot to help them get through that, that pregnancy without their immune system responding. But there's even an even more rare blood type, which is RH null, meaning they have no antigens. They ain't got none at all. They ain't got none of the RH antigens, which is like a, which is E B or E D C and E like a big E little E D C, whatever. So in those people, it's like 43 people in the world with that. They have the rarest blood type. They call it the golden blood. And you wonder why is this blood type so rare? If there's only 43 people with it. And even when you're talking about RH negative, there's only about 15% of the population that have this blood type. How come it's still, you know, how, how come it's still going, friends? How come this has not phased out? You get what I'm saying? It, you would think that it would have phased out, but it's still alive and going. And up until colonization started in the 15, 16, 1700s, Scientists say that Rh negative DNA was only found in Europe and it's in the um, Andorra Valley, right? The Basque people have the highest concentration of it. It's like 35% of their people are Rh negative. 
Um, but it comes from Europe. So it kind of makes me think what happened in Europe so many years ago that this RH negative blood type began to expand, began to grow. It, they say that the RH negative is a mutation in the DNA. So what exactly happened? Maybe these people talking about alien abductions and things like that ain't lying. I don't know. Just my thought, friends. But the origins of life, life as we know it, what I believe and what I, my hypothesis is, is that we come from one higher being. And what I call that being is God. What you choose to call that being is on you. God has created things so that they're all fall into place scientifically. And we can research and search the corners of the earth to try and figure out what it, what it is that's missing. But I don't think we're going to find it because we don't have that type of intelligence. But I do know that the powers that be, now this is me saying this is what I believe, knows that something, which is a higher power, put us here. And they're trying to escape that. They want to be in control of that thing. They want to know what that thing is. And they know that it exists. So that's why we're always trying to leave the planet. We won't search down in the bottom of the ocean. Because that's what God said a Leviathan live in. But we won't search down there. But we all out in Jupiter and Mars and everywhere else trying to see what's going on over there. Why are we trying to leave so bad? Right? Why are we trying so hard to deny that there is a God? When science points to... Okay. All right, friends. Well, you know what, friends? I feel like I didn't talk y'all so much, but we just had to do what we had to do today. And I hope I ain't got y'all up in too much of a tease. And I'm going to have to call y'all back later on. Okay, friends? Bye.